More news at 6.30. Now it's back with Corin. Thanks, Peter. Their market is restricted to only 100,000 people worldwide. So point of difference and being the best is everything. The latest product research by protective hockey gear maker Oboe has come up with some startling findings. Oboe now has to decide whether to sell the information they've uncovered or to make something that will lead the sport protection industry. Justin Turner with us. Oh, he's sweeted him. In less than a second, yeah, it could all it. be over. Then the products That's truly have nice. to work. But most sport protective headgear on the market does it, according to a new state-of-the-art testing lab. We found that some of the products don't work. Well, it's a concern because I've got children and they play some of these sports, but it's also for us a major opportunity. The Palmerston the North like designer this. of hockey yes. gear says I'm the speed keeper. of balls thrown, hit or bowled at players has increased. Yet technology around testing protective equipment has fallen behind. We've built a lab which will help us in the design of better products. So we can now fire balls at uh, speeds that you can replicate on the field. Christchurch company Nightside helped create the software used to measure the shock to the face and the brain upon impact. Linked up to a special camera taking photos at warp speed. Here they can see exactly what's happening which is giving them a lot more information and they can synchronise that with the, da the data that they're recording. It's only with that knowledge that we can now start understanding that and then start designing around the, the realities of what people are facing. They reckon they've created the recipe for the safest mask. Now it's about combining materials to meet the needs of a human face while still making it look great. Aimed particularly for hockey, cricket and softball players, Ovo has also uncovered safety information that may benefit other products, even vehicle testing. And they're now looking at whether selling that information may be the best option. I think you use it in, in quite an, a range of sports, particularly with sports equipment, when you've got uh, missiles being fired at people. But whatever they decide, Ovo reckons, thanks to them, playing sport may soon be whole lot safer. Justine Turner reporting there. When we come back, the latest market news and Brian Gaynor with his analysis. Of All the build up to the big night ahead also coming up. Welcome to Manchester. Oh dear, now that's hit him hard. Daniel Flynn gets grilled at Old Trafford, losing a tooth for the cause. Black Caps though bounce back on a grey old day. We'll have the build up to the Super 14 semis next. Also tonight, when helmets go bad. That is full on. Daniel Flynn, not the first man to lose a tooth in Manchester, a grilling from the English bowlers. Now he's got to go Black Caps fight hard in the gloom, though. Ross Taylor loosening up. Well, to the cricket now, and a defiant Ross Taylor is holding the New Zealand innings together in the second test against England at Old Trafford. While his teammates struggled to get on top of the English attack, Taylor stuck to his natural big hitting game. And unlike the drawn first test, it's worked. Stephen Stewart watched the opening day. Daryl Hare didn't waste long making his considerable presence felt in his return to test cricket, ruling in Jamie Howe's favour as New Zealand oh, chose to bat first in what Batman seemed a placid pitch. Warm. Aaron Redmond wasn't totally convincing either. Go, 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 go. However, with the opening partnership <laughs> gathering momentum, Monty Panesar came on his first change within the hour. Gotcha. The Black Caps tried to belt him out of the attack. Gotcha. Has it beaten mid on? Just. Howe reached his second consecutive 50 as they posted New Zealand's best opening stand in four years. 80 up, Redmond was judged the Kenny Ryan side bottom. Or whatever, it's a poor error of judgment. James Marshall was cruelly exposed again. After a duck. No, he's given it. And side bottom has given England true inspiration. After lunch, Jimmy Anderson extracted some life from the wicket, undoing how. Brendan McCullum took to Panesar. Smashed. Magnificent stroke over deep mid wicket. But the spinner had the last laugh as a deflection Touch. fell for Paul Collingwood. Beautiful captaincy from Vaughan, great bowling from Panasar. A mistimed hook from Daniel Flynn. Oh dear, now that's hit him hard. Cost him a tooth and his place it's in the middle well. as he was forced to retire hurt. He's done him, he's through there, now he's got nowhere to go. Jake Oram's suspect technique against short pitch bowling was also targeted as England threatened to take charge. Crusted him. The first test saviour somehow survived while Ross Taylor took the attack to Anderson, silencing critics who questioned his rush of blood in the, the first hook. test. And hit it very, very well and a long way. Taylor raced to his fourth test 50 at a runner ball rate 
as the Black Caps fought back into the match before bad light brought an early close to an intriguing opening day. Stephen Stewart, One News. So I think we can call this a solid start by the Black Caps. And have we finally found an opening combo worth sticking with? Hmm, time will tell. Ross Taylor will resume later tonight in search of his second test ton. Orem's on 22.